Hi guys, it's Lara. Thanks for watching and welcome back to my channel. Today it's a tutorial for a milk mage blouse and a short flouncy peasant skirt. As always, I will first explain the pattern and then I will show you how I made the pieces. The main pattern that I have used and adjusted for this project was a pattern that I also used for a project that we did together not so long ago, and that was a peasant dress. So I will link the video down below because that's where I also explained how you could create the pattern for yourself. The fabric that I have used today was 100% cotton with embroidery and I even bought it secondhand. So if you want to know how I made my milkmaid blouse and the peasant skirt, then please keep watching. Let's have a look at the sketch of the outfit that we are going to create together today. And I also made a sketch of the pattern part and a little sketch of how you could create yourself the milkmaid blouse pattern with the help of a shirt. I will explain it very detailed uh, for those of you who are beginners. Uh, so if that's basically clear to you, I will blend in on the screen the time to which you can skip. It's going to be the time where I will be showing the parts cut out of the fabric. So this was the idea for today's outfit. I have here a cropped milkmaid blouse and a peasant skirt, which is a no zipper version because there are elastic bands. Uh, pulled through the waistband. It has two ruffles and there is a really lovely edging made with vintage lace on the bottom of each flounce. Let's start with the milkmaid blouse. So my idea was to have here around the upper edge a tunnel with uh, elastic band and I wanted to have like two tunnels with elastic bands uh, on the bottom edge. And for the sleeves, I wanted to have shirring here because the fabric had really nice edge on one side, which I could use for the edging as it was. So if you are not familiar with what shirring is, so shirring means you will sew through the fabric with straight stitch. You will set the straight stitch to the maximum length. And for the bottom thread, for the thread that you use on the bobbin, you would use a thin elastics like this one. So it looks like a really thick thread, but it is elastics. And there are two possibilities how to uh, bring this on your bobbin. So either you wind the bobbin manually or you would do what I do. You would simply put this on your sewing machine and wind the bobbin with the elastic uh, because for me it works fine on my sewing machine. But that being said, it's possible that on some sewing machines it will not work. So you might end up winding the bobbin manually, whatever works, but that's it. It's a very simple principle. So what shearing does is that when you sew through uh, the bottom edge, let's say of this sleeves, it will ruffle them, but it will be stretchy because the bottom thread was an elastic band. So it's very comfortable and it's a really great option. So these are the pattern parts for the milkmaid blouse. So we have here the front part, the back part and the sleeves. Uh, the yellow marks seam allowances. So I have here seam allowance on the sides of the sleeve and also on the top. Here I have seam allowance basically everywhere. Uh, the seam allowance on the top is everywhere quite wide because I had to fold the fabric in sufficiently so that I could make the tunnel for the elastic band and same goes for the bottom. So then I have here the parts for the skirt. So the skirt has two main parts, the front part and the back part. This is the front part and obviously the back part is from the back. I don't know why I'm explaining that. Then we have one ruffle that's shorter on the top and one ruffle that's longer. It doesn't look like it, but the ruffles meet here where they are sewn on the main pieces. So let's go over the pattern sketch. So this is the sketch for the front part and for the back part. 
you will notice that the front part is slightly arched here and it's a little bit shorter in the middle and it's rounded in the back part and a little bit longer in the back. That is something I always do uh, because it just looks better when your skirt is a little bit longer in the back, especially if you have rounded butt. I think I have explained it a couple of times, but let's go over it again. So let's say this is your front and this is your back, like this is your body from the side. So if this is the front part of the skirt and its distance um, X, and you would have the same length here in the back, then what would happen is looking from the side is your skirt would be slightly lifted because your butt is rounder than the front and that just does not look cute. But if you have uh, a length Y, which is X plus something, <laughs> however rounded your butt is, um, you just have to try that on out and see what works for you. For me, it's usually like at least one inch. Uh, then looking from the side, your skirt would create a nice line because this will be longer than the front. I hope this made sense. Here we have the flounces. So again, the upper flounce is gonna be a shorter flounce than the bottom one. Uh, that's because we will sew them together to the main parts of the skirt, as I already mentioned. If you do not have any patterns for flounces, it's really easy to create a pattern yourself you will have to create a nice slightly rounded uh, line and then you will have to figure out the width. So you will measure the bottom edge of the front part and of the back part. So you will have measurements B, that's for the front, and C for the back. You will add these two numbers and then you will divide the sum by two and that's gonna be the width of the upper edge of your flounces. Plus you will add seam allowance, which is marked here in yellow. You will not need any seam allowance on the bottom because we will simply sew around the edge with quite a dense zigzag and then we will sew around the bottom edge a nice vintage lace which you will see in a minute. And when it comes to the length of the flounces it always depends on how long your skirt is supposed to be. So what I always do is I measure from my waist the front part and then I decide on how long the skirt is supposed to be in addition to this length and then I always come up with a certain measurement so let's say it's measurement Z and that would be the length of the bottom flounce. And now let's talk shortly about how to create yourself a very simple pattern for your milkmaid blouse. So let's say you have at home a shirt pattern or you have a shirt that you like wearing. So you would copy the outlines of the pattern or of the shirt that you have and uh, you would cut the pattern somewhere shortly below your shoulders. So I marked uh, the parts that you would be left with in blue and you would part the front part and the back part in the middle. You would measure this width, let's say that's measurement D, and you would add a rectangle that is wide measurement D between the two parts of the front and the back part. And then you would end up with basically these pieces, front and back part. When you copy the pattern for the sleeves, once the pattern has been cut back, uh, you will be left with a piece that looks a lot like this. Again, you would part it in the middle and then you would measure one side, like one half of the upper edge. So I came up with a measurement E and then you would have the left side of the pattern. Then you would add a rectangle between the left side and the right side of the pattern and the width of the rectangle would be the same measurement. So in this case E. And then for the bottom, you would add as much seam allowance as you want to have. So it depends. Uh, in this case, I only had to add a little bit because I planned the shearing. If you would want to fold the edge inwards and have a tunnel for the elastic band, you would have to add a little bit more. Um, where you will definitely need seam allowance is the sides and the upper edge. So that would be the pattern for the sleeves. And last but not least, let's have a look at the pattern for the waistband, which is basically just a simple rectangle. Now let's figure out first this measurement. 
So that's gonna be the sum of the upper edge of the front part and of the upper edge of the back part, which is the same. So it's gonna be basically twice A. This measurement depends on how wide you want your waistband to be. So I wanted to have a waistband that would be two inches high when it will be finished, which means this needs to be four inches plus seam allowance. You will also need seam allowance on the sides. Now, shortly about the seam allowance, the way I wanted my waistband um, to be was that I wanted to sew it on the upper edge. And then when I would fold it, I wanted to sew the bottom edge through a little bit below the seam, below the waistline. And that resulted in adding different seam allowance on one edge. That was the edge that should be sewn below the waistline or below the seam. So I have here on the bottom half an inch uh, seam allowance, which is enough to sew the waistband on the upper edge of the main skirt part. And on the other side, I made it double. I made it one inch so that when I would fold the end in and pin it in place that it would be a little bit below the seam where I would sew it through with stretches zigzag. And originally I planned on putting a white elastic band through the tunnel that the waistband would create, but it ended up looking too bulky, so I changed my mind. And at the end, what I did was I have sewn through in several rows of straight stitch, which created four tunnels for four elastic bands, and that way the waistband looked flatter and much nicer. Here we have all the parts for the milkmaid blouse. So let's start with this one. This is the front part. So I have here one layer of the main fabric and on top of it I have a second layer of a very thin iron-on interfacing that I will iron on it from the wrong side. Uh, which is going to be basically a visual protection because the fabric, first of all, it's white and second, it has embroidery with little holes. And since I'm not wearing any bra, I definitely need a second layer on the front part. And the reason why I didn't make it all the way down towards the bottom, bottom is because I'm gonna be folding the bottom up anyway and there will be elastics inside, so it didn't make any sense to use that much of the iron-on interfacing. Uh, then I have here above it the back part and here are the sleeves and then I have here the elastics and white thread. The way the fabric was designed was that it had on one side these beautiful arches where you can cut around it and use it as a really nice edging and uh, that was something that I wanted to have for my sleeves. So when I was positioning the sewing pattern for the sleeves, I made sure that the bottom of the sleeves would be exactly where the arches were. So I already have a nice edging there. And then I have here a bobbin with a thin elastic uh, because I want to have shearing on the sleeves. Let's have a look at the parts for my skirt. So let's start here on the top. This is going to be the front part. And I have here a second layer of the thin iron-on interfacing that I used also for the Milkmaid blouse for the same reason, so that it wouldn't be a see-through. This is going to be the back part. And again, the interfacing. Then I have here the flounces or ruffles or whatever you want to call them. So I have here the big one and then over that I will sew on a shorter one and this is vintage lace that I'm going to use for the edging of the bottoms of the flounces. It's a really pretty one and the best thing about this vintage lace is that I uh, usually buy these secondhand. There is a store not far from Vienna that has secondhand fabrics and sewing supplies and they don't cost so much there and they are just so beautiful. So um, this is what I'm gonna use today. As a first step, I ironed on the interfacing on the front part of the Milkmaid blouse and on the main parts of the skirt. Then I decided on how far from the bottom edge of the sleeves I wanted to have the shearing. Once I knew uh, what distance I wanted to have, I put in a few pins. 
I took a spare strip of fabric and did a little test of the shirring. So I set the straight stitch to the maximum length and I used the thin elastics as the bottom thread. And I've sewn through this spare strip of fabric just to see if I like what it creates. I was happy with the result, so I moved on to the sleeves. I have sewn two rows uh, from the right side of the sleeves and I made sure that the distance from the bottom edge and the distance between the two rows was exactly the same on both of my sleeves. Here is what the shirring on the bottom of the sleeves looked like once it was done. Next I pinned the sides of the sleeves together right side to right side. I have sewn them together with straight stitch and I used zigzag for the edging. Once that was done, I folded the seam to one side and I have sewn through with straight stitch. And this is what the finished sleeves looked like. As a next step, I pinned the sides of the front and the back part together. I placed them right side to right side, wrong side facing up. I have sewn the pieces together with straight stitch and again I used zigzag for the edging. Here is what it looked like. Then I pinned the sleeves in, I put them right side to right side and I have sewn them on with straight stitch and you guessed it, I did the edging of the seam with zigzag. I also edged the bottom and the upper edge of the blouse with zigzag and this is what the blouse looked like then so far. I turned the blouse to the wrong side for the next steps. I folded the upper edge towards the wrong side. I took my measuring tape and I measured the width of the fold. In my case it was one and quarter inches. While I was working my way around the entire upper edge, I made sure that the width of the fold would be everywhere the same. And for that I always use the measuring tape. In addition to that, I personally always like comparing random spots around the edge, just to be sure. I have sewn around the edge in two rows of straight stitch. And I left one small spot open on the bottom row for the elastic band. When I was done, I measured the elastic band around my shoulders and I cut the necessary amount. I put a safety pin in one end of the elastic band and then I pulled the band through the tunnel that I created with the two rows of the straight stitch. When I was done, I have sewn the ends of the elastic band together and I have sewn the open spot through with straight stitch and then the upper edge of the milkmaid blouse looked like this. Next, I folded the bottom edge towards the wrong side. This time the width of the fold was one and three quarter inches. Just like while working on the upper edge, I always made sure that the width of the fold was everywhere exactly the same. I have sewn through in three rows of straight stitch because I wanted to have two tunnels and I left one spot open on the two bottom rows. I pulled into each of the tunnels elastic band. Um, before that, of course, I had to measure the elastic band, so I put it on my upper body about two inches below my boobs and I finished up the same way I did with the upper edge. And then my milkmaid blouse was finished. For the skirt I first pinned the sides of the back and the front part together. I've sewn them together with straight stitch and I have edged the seams with zigzag. 
Here we have the strip of fabric for the waistband. I've sewn the sides together. I pinned one edge of the waistband to the main parts of the skirt, right side to right side. Here is what it looked like when the waistband was pinned in place. I have sewn it on with straight stitch and again I edged the seam with zigzag. As a next step I folded the waistband inwards, I folded the edge in and I pinned it in place. Just like with anything, I made sure that the width of the waistband was at any random place the same. Once I was done with the pinning, I have first sewn the bottom edge of the waistband through with stretchy zigzag and then I have sewn through in three rows of straight stitch to create tunnels for multiple elastic bands, which I then pulled in and I finished up the same way I did when I was working on the Milkmaid blouse. Well, and then it looked like this. As a next step, I started working on the flounces. So first I pinned the sides of both flounces together and then I have sewn them through with straight stitch and I did the edging with zigzag. I have also sewn around the bottom edge of each flounce with zigzag. And once that was finished, I pinned the vintage lace to the flounce's bottom edges and I have sewn it on with stretchy zigzag. Here is what it looked like once that was done. I pulled the shorter flounce over the longer flounce and I've pinned them together on several places. So the wrong side of the shorter flounce was facing the right side of the longer flounce. This is what it looked like. Next, I pinned the flounces right side to right side to the main skirt parts. Here is what it looked like when the flounces were pinned in place. I have sewn them on with straight stitch and then, just like with any other parts of today's outfit, I used zigzag for the edging. And once that was done, my peasant skirt was finished. Both the peasant skirt and the milkmaid blouse are basically timeless pieces that you can not only wear together but also combine with so many more things from your wardrobe. For me personally, this outfit is the ultimate summer outfit. Two things that I especially appreciate about this outfit are that first of all, I bought the fabric secondhand and second, the fabric is 100% cotton, which means the fabric is breathable and that makes the outfit really comfortable during the hot summer days. And that is it for today. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions, feel free to write them down below in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching. I love you guys so much and see you soon. Bye.